With or without foreskin, it's a question men have asked for centuries. And for just as long, it's been surrounded by cultural, religious, and medical debate. In today's world, where we have access to more scientific information than ever before, the debate is often less about tradition and more about health, function, and personal choice. So what's the right answer? The truth is, there isn't one. This video isn't here to tell you what's right, but to give you the clear evidence-based facts so you can understand what's right for you. We're going to cut through the noise and explore the natural function of the foreskin, the proven advantages of its removal, the potential risks involved, and the specific medical reasons why surgery might not just be an option, but a necessity. By the end, you'll have a much clearer picture to help guide your decisions. First, let's start with the basics. What exactly is the foreskin, and what does it do, the foreskin known medically as the prepuce? is the retractable sleeve of skin that naturally covers the head of the penis, which is called the glands. At birth, it's fused to the glands and typically becomes fully retractable over time, usually by adolescence. But it's not just a simple piece of skin. It has several biological functions. The first is protection. The foreskin acts as a natural sheath shielding the highly sensitive glands from constant friction against clothing, and from exposure to bacteria or irritants in the environment. Think of it as a built-in protective barrier for one of the most delicate parts of the body. The second function is moisture and lubrication. The inner surface of the foreskin helps to maintain a moist and chemically balanced environment around the glands. This natural lubrication can contribute to comfort during sexual activity. And finally, there's the matter of sensation. The foreskin is an incredibly nerve-rich tissue it contains thousands of fine touch nerve endings that are highly responsive to stimulation, and for many men, it plays an integral role in sexual pleasure and arousal. For thousands of years, the removal of the foreskin, a procedure called circumcision, has been practiced for cultural and religious reasons. Today, however, many people approach this decision from a purely medical and health oriented perspective. So, let's look at the other side of the coin. What are the documented medical benefits of removing the foreskin? First and foremost is hygiene. Because a circumcised penis has an exposed glands, it is generally simpler to keep clean. This prevents the buildup of smegma, a thick whitish substance made up of shed skin cells and oily secretions. While smegma is harmless and can be easily washed away, poor hygiene can lead to its accumulation which may cause odor and create a breeding ground for bacteria, leading to inflammation and infections. This brings us to the second major advantage, a reduced risk of certain infections. The area under the foreskin can trap moisture and bacteria, increasing the risk for a condition called phalopostitis, which is an inflammation of both the glands and the foreskin. Studies have also shown that circumcision in infants can significantly lower their risk of developing urinary tract infections, or UTI, especially within their first year of life. The third and perhaps most scientifically supported advantage is the reduced risk of acquiring certain sexually transmitted infections, or SDA. This is where the evidence becomes very compelling. Several major large-scale randomized controlled trials, including landmark studies published in prestigious medical journals like The Lancet, were conducted in parts of Africa where SDI rates are high. The results were consistent and clear. Male circumcision was found to reduce the risk of acquiring HIV through heterosexual intercourse by up to 60%. The research didn't stop there. These studies also showed a significant reduction in the transmission of HPV, the human papillomavirus, which can cause genital warts and is a major cause of cervical cancer in women and penile and throat cancer in men. Furthermore, there was a documented decrease in the risk of acquiring herpes simplex virus type 2, the virus that causes genital herpes. It's believed this protective effect is due to the nature of the inner foreskin, which is thin, non-keratinized, and rich in immune cells, that HIV and other viruses target for entry into the body. Removing this vulnerable tissue removes a primary gateway for infection. However, and this is a critical point to understand, circumcision reduces the risk. It does not eliminate it. It is not a vaccine or a substitute for safe sex practices. 
Using condoms remains the most effective way to prevent the transmission of STI. Finally, there's the reduced risk of penile cancer. While penile cancer is very rare in developed countries, its risk factors are closely linked to chronic inflammation, poor hygiene, and HPV infection. Since circumcision improves hygiene and lowers the rate of HPV, it is directly associated with a lower lifetime risk of developing this type of cancer. Of course, like any medical decision, this isn't a one-sided story. No surgical procedure is without its downsides. So what are the risks and disadvantages associated with circumcision? The most obvious is that it is a surgery, and like any surgery, it carries a set of inherent risks, even though they are generally very low when performed by a skilled professional in a sterile environment. These risks include pain both during and after the procedure, especially in the immediate healing period. There is also a risk of bleeding and infection at the incision site. In some cases, there can be an unsatisfactory cosmetic result, <laughs> such as scarring or the removal of too much or too little skin, which might require a corrective procedure later. The most frequently discussed disadvantage is the potential for altered sensation. As we mentioned, the foreskin is packed with nerve endings that contribute to sexual pleasure. Removing this tissue will, by definition, change the sensory experience of the penis. The glands now permanently exposed will undergo a process called keratinization, where the skin becomes slightly thicker and less sensitive over time. While many circumcised men report full and satisfying sex lives with no perceived negative impact, some individuals do report a change or a reduction in sensitivity that they feel detracts from their sexual experience. This is a highly subjective topic, but it's a valid consideration. Finally, removing the foreskin means losing its natural protective and lubricating functions. The glands will be permanently exposed to the friction of clothing, which is what leads to, to that keratinization process we just talked about. And while we're on the sensitive topic of um, sexual health and performance, it's important to acknowledge that for many men, concerns go far beyond just the foreskin. They relate to the core challenge of achieving and maintaining a strong, confident erection. If that's something you've ever thought about, I've recently come across a fascinating video from a leading biomed engineer. It details a bizarrely simple seven-second home remedy that gets to the real scientific root cause of male performance issues, and it does so naturally without any pills or risky injections. For those of you who are interested, I've made it easy to watch. Just point your phone's camera at the QR code you see on the screen. Now, I've also put the direct link for you in the pinned comment right below this video. It's truly eye-opening. Okay, now let's get back to our main question and talk about the specific medical situations where circumcision is no longer a choice, but a clear necessity. So, after weighing all the pros and cons, how does anyone actually decide when is surgery the right choice the er, answer is simple. It depends entirely on your individual situation. There are certain scenarios where circumcision is not just a choice, but a clear medical recommendation. The most common is a condition called phimosis. This is when the foreskin is too tight to be retracted back over the glands. In mild cases, it might be manageable, but in severe cases, true phimosis can make proper hygiene impossible, lead to recurrent infections, and cause significant pain during erections or intercourse. A related but more urgent condition is paramosis. This is a medical emergency where a tight foreskin is retracted, but then gets stuck behind the head of the penis and cannot be returned to its normal position. This acts like a tourniquet, cutting off blood flow to the glands and requires immediate medical attention to prevent serious tissue damage. Additionally, for men who suffer from chronic recurring infections like balanopostitis that don't respond to creams or better hygiene, circumcision is often the definitive cure. For everyone else, the decision is more personal. For parents of a newborn, the choice is often based on cultural, religious, or preventative health beliefs. For an adult who has no medical issues, the decision is typically a personal one, weighing the potential health benefits against the risks and the desired cosmetic outcome. In conclusion, the foreskin has natural, useful functions, but its removal offers significant scientifically proven health advantages, particularly in 
reducing the risk of certain serious infections. On the other hand, it's a surgical procedure that carries risks and permanently alters the body. The decision is not a simple one-size-fits-all answer. It's a complex choice that should be made with a full understanding of both sides. If you have any pain, discomfort, difficulty with retraction, or any other concerns about your foreskin, the single most important step you can take is to speak with a doctor. A urologist can perform a physical exam, assess your specific anatomy, and give you a personalized recommendation based on your body and your health. This is a discussion that needs to be had with a medical professional, not decided based on online forms or anecdotal stories. We hope this balanced overview was helpful in clearing up the debate. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more clear and factual health content, and share it with anyone who might be asking these same important questions. Thanks for watching.